Okay. So I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation to speak here. So uh, Abhin have talked about uh, the lattice packing problem yesterday to find the densest possible lattice packing. And the goal of today's lecture is to give at least an overview of some of the techniques that go into the computation of uh, the densest possible lattice packing. Um, so uh, the thing is, uh, I learned almost everything that I'm going to talk about today for this lecture. I'm new to it. So if you find me making mistakes or if something could be explained better, please do stop me. Yeah. So, uh, so we'll have a, OK, I want to save this space for. So E is an n-dimensional Euclidean space. Uh, with its norm, with its usual norm. And um, for a lattice, full lattice, uh, lambda contained in E, the density of uh, sphere packing uh, on lambda denoted by delta of lambda is uh, this what okay so uh, abhinav gave this yesterday essentially this is the volume so the uh, this is the norm of lambda which is the norm of the shortest the smallest possible uh, which is the smallest possible norm of a vector in lambda. And so uh, a sphere of radius uh, norm lambda over 2 is the largest possible sphere that you can put inside, uh, that you can put on lambda, on the points of lambda. So this is the volume of uh, this sphere divided by the volume of the fundamental region. OK, so this is the quantity that, uh, um, and uh, Delta star of, uh, say, I'll call this Sn. Oh, oh, here, Wn is the volume of the n-dimensional unit, unit board. Is the supremum over all lattices lambda of uh, delta of lambda. So as he mentioned yesterday, delta star of Sn uh, has been, is known up to dimension 8 and uh, dimension 24. And the methods we will uh, go through today will essentially tell us, will, will, it will be an overview of how this number is computed up to dimension 8. OK, but uh, for that, the first thing I want to do is establish a dictionary between lattices in quadratic forms. And then this question will get translated into a corresponding question about quadratic forms. So we'll do that first. Um, So I'll try to pack everything in this dictionary in this area and we'll leave it for the talk if needed. So, so the lattices in, this Euclid, in the Euclidean space equipped with this positive definite uh, scalar product would basically correspond to uh, positively, positive definite quadratic form. So we'll see how that is done. Let uh, lambda contained in E be a lattice with uh, basis say A1 through An. And uh, let A be the associated matrix. So you write each of these. Uh, so this is the matrix with whose column vectors are exactly these basis vectors. Uh, so this is the matrix A. Then uh, the associated uh, 
quadratic form. Um, so I'll call the n-dimensional integer lattices uh, z to the oh, or, yeah I'll just denote it as z n. Then uh, q of x is uh, x transpose a transpose a x. Right, this is basically the gram, I mean, uh, Tathagata spoke about it yesterday. This is the gram matrix associated to this. And uh, you could also write this as Q of x is uh, some xi uh, ai this is another way of writing this. So given this lattice, this is the associated quadratic form. Uh, and uh, the minimal norm of lambda, which is uh, I, which is n of lambda, is the infimum of x in lambda, x not equal to zero of norm x square, and. Uh, And this corresponds to uh, minimum, uh, or maybe if for this, I'll, I'll denote it as Q lambda for, for the time being. M of uh, Q lambda is just infimum of Q of x, right? If you put it in this form, this is exactly the infimum of Q of x. X is in Z n minus zero. Oh, did, okay. So I was trying to, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll try to, yeah. Um, so the ball of ball of greatest possible radius packed by lambda is over two, right? Which is square root of m of Q lambda over two, and um, so this is the infimum of Q of x. X is in this. X runs over this integral lattice. That's see, uh, yeah. You can't read this one. Norm lambda is square root of n of lambda. Norm of lambda is square root of n of lambda. This is the infimum over x in lambda, x non-zero of norm x square. This is the, the length of the shortest possible vector. Okay, and uh, the determinant of lambda would correspond to the square root of the discriminant of q. The determinant of lambda is the determinant of A, which is the square root of discriminant of Q. Um, so delta star of lambda, which was this uh, packing, uh, oh sorry, yeah, I want to call this delta star. Delta star of lambda is uh, omega n norm lambda to the power n divided by two to the power n times determinant of lambda. And this corresponds to delta star of Q lambda is uh, omega n m of Q to the power n over two divided by two to the power n times square root of discriminant of Q. The last thing I want, uh, uh, two more things. I just want to say two more things in this dictionary. So uh, let L be the, or rather this doesn't have to be here, so let me just write this separately. Okay, so let 
n be the set of lattices in E and, fix, and uh, let lambda naught in L, then uh, we have a map from GL of uh, E to uh, L sending uh, a transformation u to u of lambda naught, right? And um, so L is basically in bijection and the stabilizer of the lattice lambda naught is GL of lambda naught. So the set of lattices in E is in bijection with uh, the GL of E mod GL of lambda naught, right? So L is in bijection with uh, with uh, GL of E mod GL of lambda naught. And uh, lambda, two lattices lambda and lambda prime are isometric if there is an isometry of E that sends lambda to lambda prime, okay? If there is an isometry of E that sends lambda to lambda prime. And uh, then, and the isometries of E are exactly, is exactly the orthogonal group of E, right? Oh. The stabilizer of lambda naught, the elements of GLE that stabilize the lattice lambda naught. Is, is uh, G, GLN of Z, yeah. I, want, I don't want to say, co yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, uh, if, if we identify lambda with z to the n, then this is exactly GLNR mod GLNZ. And, and for that, then uh, u of lambda naught is isometric to v of lambda naught if uh, u is uh, w, v, and I'll use my notation where w is in the orthogonal group of E and s is in uh, GL of lambda So the isometric classes of lattices in E is, uh, so, Iso classes of lattices in E is in bijection with o, o of E mod uh, GL of E. And a similar thing can be done for, uh, uh, I mean, the equivalence class of quadratic forms will also be described by this, uh, by this uh, group. So uh, let uh, Q be a, I'll denote by Q plus of E, be the set of all positive definite quadratic forms. On E and uh, for U in GL of E, Q composed with U is again a form, again a quadratic form. And uh, we say that Q is equivalent to Q prime if uh, Q prime is Q composed with U for U in uh, GL of lambda. Then, uh, so we, I've already fixed this uh, norm in the Euclidean space. So the map from GL of E to Q plus of E 
sending u to x goes to norm of u of x squared. This map is surjective, right? This is because a real quadratic form is determined by its signature is surjective. And the stabilizer of the uh, canonical form is the orthogonal group. So, um, so Q plus of E is in uh, bijection with uh, O of E mod GL of E. And uh, if you're gonna look at the equivalence, cla uh, equivalence class of uh, quadratic forms, then and the equivalence class of forms in is given by O of E mod GL of E mod GL. Yeah, so, uh, so I'll just write this here. Isometric classes of lattices in E is, uh, which is given by O of E, GL of E, mod GL of lambda naught, and equivalence class of uh, quadratic, positive definite quadratic forms is also given by the same double cosmetic operation. And given a quadratic form here, given uh, Q is extra, Q of X is X transpose S X, where uh, You're not able to read this, right? So this sentence, I've just copied whatever I wrote here. Uh, so yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, given Q of X, given a quadratic, positive definite quadratic form Q of X is X transpose S X. This can be decomposed, this matrix S can be de decomposed as A transpose A, where A is non-singular, right? And then the associated lattice is given by, uh, then lambda Q is just uh, Z A, where this is the n-dimensional integral lattice. So we can go back and forth between lattices and quadratic forms. This is the dictionary. Whatever quantity is being measured here has a co corresponding meaning here. And uh, estimating this would amount to estimating this. Oh, sorry. This was supposed to be, sorry, this is, oh yeah, delta star of lambda. So we want to estimate the supremum over all lattices lambda of this. This is the lattice packing density that would translate to estimating this this number. Oh yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. This is the canonical norm. I mean, this is essentially like this where this is the canonical norm. U of X, norm of U of X, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, so I want to define what the Hermite constant is. And extreme lattices. So let f of q be m of q over the nth root of 
discriminant of Q. Uh, the motivation for this will come later, uh, where I'll state this theorem of Hermite for defining this function f. Okay, the form Q is called extreme if uh, m of Q is one and Q is a local maximum for f. And let gamma n be the supremum of all the q in q plus of e, e or the equivalence class of q plus of e of f of q. which is the supremum of uh, m of q over the nth root of discriminant of q and this is called the Hermite constant. And note delta star of S n is uh, omega n gamma n over 4, right? Uh, this is just, I mean, just writing it in, the, in terms of this point. And um, I'll just write, add, if it's okay, I'll just add it here. And a form Q is called critical if uh, is a absolute maximum for F. Okay. So the uh, so uh, figuring out the densest possible uh, lattice packing amounts to figuring out uh, the critical quadratic form. Okay. In uh, in this dictionary. So I'll just uh, figuring out the densest possible lattice packing corresponds to figuring out the critical quadratic forms. Critical quadratic forms. And uh, that's the goal of uh, lattice reduction theory, which will be the Oh, before that, I want to uh, say a few words about this Hermite constant. Um, so if we look at uh, f of q from the point of view of lattices, then because the sphere packing density, this packing density is bounded above by 1, it is clear that uh, f of q is bounded and so gamma n is defined it makes sense it makes sense to look at the supremum this is this has a uniform bound in terms of in terms of this number right so uh, gamma n makes sense but uh, i guess the f the context in which this constant first showed up was for quadratic forms and a priori it is not clear that this is bounded uniformly as q varies and that's a theorem of hermite which is probably how this constant gets its name so i'll say uh, I'll state this theorem of Hermite. I'll state it in the context of lattices. Of course, the translation can be made to quadratic forms using this dictionary. So every lattice lambda has a basis such that the norm of E1 is bounded above by 4 over 3 to the power n times n minus 1 over 2 times uh, determinant of lambda. So if you apply this to the shortest possible basis vector, if you apply this, applying this to the shortest possible 
basis vector then this will yield yield that n of lambda is uh, bounded above by 4 over 3 to the power n minus 1 over 2 times determinant of lambda to the power 1 over n. So, in particular n of lambda over determinant of lambda to the power 1 over n is bounded about has this uniform bound and uh, that is the reason we define f of q to be m of q over nth root of the discriminant of q. That is exactly, sorry? n of lambda is the norm of lambda is it's the square of the norm. It is the square of the norm. I will leave this here, I guess there is some notation here which we will keep using. So, so n of lambda is exactly m of q in this translation. So, this, uh, this is a theorem of Hermite and this constant that we uh, defined here is the Hermite constant. In, in particular, this is bounded above by 4 over 3 to the power n minus 1 over 2. That is a bound that we get. We could get a different bound from the uh, lattice density packing, a uh, lattice packing problem, but this is the bound. So, uh, correct me if I am wrong, I do not think this bound is optimal for n bigger than 2, even for n equals 3 it is not, but for n equals 2. Uh, so, I will basically calculate delta star of S2 today and then we will see that this is achieved. So, this is the optimal bound for n equals 2. Okay. So, go the goal of lattice reduction theory is the following. In each equivalence class of quadratic forms, you want to pick out a form for which the calculation of gamma n and this number simplifies. So, uh, lattice reduction theory want to pick out a representative in each equivalence class of quadratic forms, one for which the calculation of of uh, gamma n and delta star of s n simplifies. Okay, so we will talk about two kinds of reduction theories. The first is, uh, is the Lagrange Sieber Minkowski. So, I will give a definition. So, after I mean the definition uh, might not be well motivated, but once we uh, after doing that we will show that every positive definite quadratic form is equivalent to an LSM reduced form and in the course of the proof it will become clear that uh, <coughs> this is the a positive definite quadratic form is LSM reduced oh I will write a positive definite quadratic form Q of x is x transpose S x is LSM reduced if S 1 j is greater than or equal to 0 for j equals 2 to n and uh, Q of z is greater than or equal to S i i for all integer vectors uh, yeah for all integer vectors um, 
with the property that such that the GCD of uh, Zi plus 1 to Zn is 1 for all. So, a lemma every positive definite quadratic form is uh, equivalent to an LSM reduced form. The matrix S is uh, SIG. Just make sure I Sorry? A fundamental domain? I, oh, I, I don't know what So, uh, I'll, I'll give a proof of this, I'll give a quick proof of this. Um, Let Q of X be X transpose SX and uh, we know that S is A transpose A for a non singular matrix A. We discussed this uh, for non singular A. And Q of Z to the power half, I guess we looked at this, is the norm of uh, AZ in uh, lambda. So, to prove that is equal, so proving lemma is equivalent to proving that uh, every lattice. Lambda has a basis uh, A1 through An such that the is greater than or equal to uh, the Fermi Ai, Ai and uh, for all integer vectors with uh, the GCD of Zi, Zi plus 1 through Zn equals 1 for all i equals 1 through i. And uh, that A1, Aj is greater than or equal to 0 for all, right? That's what this means. Yeah. 
yeah so let a1 in lambda such that I mean the uh, okay so I'll just quickly write down the proof a1 a1 is the minimum of uh, a a and uh, let b2 be the set of all a in lambda such that a1 a can be completed to a basis of lambda. So let uh, A2 in B2 be such that the pairing between A1 and A2 is greater than or equal to 0 and uh, the norm of A2 is the minimum of the norms of all the elements of B2 and this construction will produce such a basis, right? If you and A2, A2 is the minimum of A and B2. And uh, yeah, you just proceed like this and you can show that this construction will exa exactly lead you to a basis which has these properties, okay? Lemma, a positive definite binary quadratic form is uh, LSM reduced if and only if S11 is less than or equal to S22, 0 less than or equal to 2S12 less than or equal to S11. Should I show you how to do this? Do you want to see how to do this? It's a simple. Uh, it's a simple calculation, so I'll skip it. And uh, so from this, the discriminant of Q uh, divided by S11, S22 is which is using this in, these inequalities is greater than or equal to 1 minus S11 over 4S22, which is greater than or equal to 3 over 4. And uh, hence M of Q, which is S11, uh, from the way we have uh, set this up, from the fact that this form is LSM reduced, M of Q is uh, S11, which is less than or equal to square root of S11, S22, is less than or equal to 4 over 3. So from this, you get that gamma 2 is bounded above by uh, square root of 4 over 3, which was which is the Hermite inequality for uh, n equals 2. And uh, so, so yeah, I'll just say it. And uh, yesterday he discussed an example where this is achieved for the hexagonal lattice, right? So this shows the delta star of S2 is exactly pi over square root of 12. So what uh, really happens is the reduction theory, I guess, allows you to give uh, bounds on these uh, delta star of Sn, and then you compute it for a suitably chosen lattice, probably one of them that uh, was uh, discussed in his talk yesterday to prove that uh, delta star of Sn is exactly that bound and uh, 
So this allows you to do it for n equals 2 and n equals 3. n equals 3 is the theorem of Gauss. So I'll just state the results. Um, I mean, you can write down when a positive definite ternary form is LSM reduced. You can write down conditions for that and do a similar calculation and obtain an upper bound for delta star of S3 and, uh, you know, calculate it on the example and show that it is in fact. So for ternary forms, a positive definite ternary form is LSM reduced if um, S11 less than or equal to S22, S33, 0 less than or equal to 2, S12 less than or equal to S11. Two S two three. It's uh, already slightly more complicated than the two-dimensional case, and from this, it's a theorem of Gauss that uh, delta star of S three is exactly. So. Uh, But uh, to my understanding, this reduction theory uh, has allowed you to go only up to S equals, uh, N equals 3. So there is another reduction theory that I want to discuss, which can calculate, uh, which allows the calculation of delta star of Sn for N less than or equal to 8. Uh, So a positive definite quadratic form is uh, KZ reduced if Q of X is sum I equals 1 to N CI times xi plus where and uh, Yeah, so I mean the formula looks complicated, but uh, I, I don't want to go, so okay, yeah, the main result uh, is every positive definite quadratic form is equivalent to a KZ reduced form. I mean the this formula might look complicated, but the idea is very simple. 
uh, ignoring this for the time being, expressing a quadratic form as a sum of squares amounts to finding an orthogonal basis for the lattice lambda. So the proof just proceeds along the lines of Grandchamp. Okay. So I don't want to go through the proof, uh, but uh, so on the way you impose conditions like this on the basis on the projections of the basis vectors that you construct inductively, you impose conditions like this, and uh, the orthogonal basis that you construct may not be, uh, the points may not lie on lambda, but then when you express it back into the basis that you originally constructed, it will take this form, that's it. But the idea of the proof is just Grand Schmidt. Zi. Oh, T, J, K, Z, K square. I mean, yeah, I, I guess it would be easier if one just starts reducing this positive definite quadratic form. Uh, you know, you, you try to uh, do Grand Schmidt and uh, start constructing your orthogonal basis and express it back into the original basis, it will take its form, this form. So. And then the, the uh, Oh yeah, I have to say a few things. Okay, maybe I can just say it here. Note. Yeah, uh, I'll just check and make sure I've not uh, made any mistake in writing this formula down. Yeah, it is, uh, it is as it is uh, written, yeah. Uh, any issues? Okay, but uh, having done this, Note for a KZ reduced form, um, M of Q is C1, and uh, the discriminant of Q is C1 to Cn. So, uh, estimating uh, gamma of Q would amount to studying the relation between C1 and the nth root of. C1 through Cn, and that is how the estimates are given, okay? Um, and so gamma n is the supremum of uh, is the supremum, I, I'll just not say, I mean, I don't want to introduce more notation here, C1 over n root of C1 through Cn. Okay, so I'll uh, and uh, one can use this reduction also to estimate uh, gamma two and gamma three that we already discussed using the other reduction theory, but it also allows one to go all the way up to eight. Uh, this is the method that allows one to go all the way up to eight, and. Uh, Uh, this reduction theory is used for the calculation of, of uh, delta star of S n and uh, the names already showed up in his talk yesterday, Abhinav's talk yesterday, but I'll just say it. And uh, the bounds were also obtained by, the bounds on these coefficients, CIs, were also obtained by. Okay. So that's the first uh, part of the talk. So I want to move on to discussing uh, the method, the theorem of, it's a, the it's a theorem of Oronai. So what we want to do 
to calculate delta, yeah, to calculate delta star of Sn, uh, okay, I'll just write it down. So we recall, I'll just recall a, some, a definition that I wrote down earlier. Recall that a quadratic form, a positive definitely positive definite quadratic form Q naught is extreme if uh, M of Q naught is one and uh, the function. This attains a local maximum at Q0. This is how we define extreme forms. Attains a so uh, to study gamma n, uh, it would be helpful to have a better understanding of extreme forms, or have a list of extreme forms. In fact. Um, So the theorem of Voronoi gives an alternate characterization of extreme forms. So I'll state, uh, I'll first state Voronoi's theorem. Uh, yeah, positive definite quadratic form is extreme if and only if it is perfect and eutactic. So I, uh, I'll define these things for you. I'll uh, give you a few ways of uh, thinking about perfect forms, but I don't have uh, much to say about eutactic forms. I'll just give the definition. And uh, so we'll first talk about perfect forms. So we'll prove this in a minute, but perfect forms are basically forms that are uniquely determined by their minimal vectors. Uh, uh, I'll give a definition that in some sense will immediately imply that perfect is weakly eutectic, and then I will prove that perfect uh, forms also have this characterization that I just mentioned. Okay, so for uh, zero not equals x in E, let Px be the So this is a symmetric n by n matrix. This is just xx transpose, sorry. If you denote x as this column vector, this is just xx transpose in, in the symmetric n by n matrices. Okay, so a definition, or I don't know if it's okay to write, I'll just write it there. Local maximum for the for this function. This is a real valued function. Um, Okay, uh, wow. okay, um, a positive definite 
uh, quadratic form. on Rn with matrix A is perfect if uh, uh, if the set of all Px x in S of Q. Uh, S of Q is the set of minimal vectors of Q. Okay, this is the set of spans the space of symmetric n by n matrices. Uh, uh, S of Q is the set of minimal vectors for Q. Yeah. And it is U tactic if uh, there exists a relation for the matrix A inverse. A inverse is the sum of uh, hex in S of Q. Uh, I will use rho x px with uh, these coefficients rho x strictly greater than 0. And uh, uh, there is a, a weaker definition. It is called weakly eutectic if the inverse of A can be written as a sum like this. And note that uh, a form is perfect immediately implies that it is weakly eutectic because A inverse belongs to sim n. Okay. S of Q is the set of minimal vectors for Q. Rho, rho x are some uh, for some coefficients, yeah, in R. Yeah, so it's a. I'll state it as a theorem uh, because it is stated as a. Uh, so it's a Gorkian and a perfect quadratic form. with a given minimum is uniquely determined all the rho x to be strictly positive yes that's what it make, that's what makes it u tactic weakly u tactic just says that there is a linear combination like this but rho x could be anything and uh, perfect already implies weakly u tactic because A inverse lies in the space of symmetric matrices. Okay, if M is uniquely determined, by its uh, set of minimal vectors. What this means is if you have two forms, which take the same value on the, which have the same set of minimal vect vectors and the same m, then the forms are the same. Okay, so we'll prove this. The proof is not uh, so. If Q one, Q two are such that uh, Q one of x equals Q two of x equals m for all x in uh, s of q i don't know if i'm confusing the notation but anyway then uh, q is equal to q1 minus q2 is 0 on all uh, the minimal vectors 
and uh, this is a symmetric matrix. I'll just yeah on yeah, and uh, the matrix A of Q belongs to symmetric space, and uh, so maybe let me know. Uh, I don't know what I'm uh, how to write. Okay, so let me just. Uh, has the property. So what does this mean? Q of uh, Z is uh, Z transpose uh, AQ, AZ is zero for all uh, Z and S of Q, right? And uh, if you, uh, so the trace pairing, so this means that uh, The trace pairing from sim n which is uh, which can be shown to be a, uh, it's a po it, it can be shown to be perfect gives gives that uh, the pairing between a and p x is zero for all uh, so I'm, I'm messing up notation I guess I want uh, z to be x transpose that's it I mean. okay sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm assuming that they have the same set of minimal vectors and the same M, and I want to prove that the form is unique. That, that's, the, that's the statement. So I'm, I'm saying that if Q1 and Q2 are perfect forms with the same set of minimal vectors and the same minimum, then the forms are the same. That's, I think, what the statement means. Is there a weaker statement that is true? Oh, sorry, sorry, a stronger, uh, a weaker assumption, I mean, yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. Okay. So say that again if Q is? Uh, sorry, sorry, what I didn't. Okay, so this. Uh, this should this yeah, right here, right? Because I've just rewritten this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, the same proof works, right? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Right, you're right. Thank you. Okay, so anyway, so uh, so because it was uh, I I missed this. Okay, so I'm assuming that they ha let Q to be any form that has uh, the same value as Q1 on the set of minimal vectors of Q1. Look at the difference. Then it has the property that this is zero for all Z and S of Q1. Q1 was assumed to be perfect. The trace pairing gives a perfect pairing on uh, symmetric uh, on the n by n symmetric matrices. So this tells you that uh, this condition exactly tells you that this is zero for all uh, x in. Uh, I don't know why I'm going between. I guess z is just x transpose. I'm sorry for messing this up, but uh, for all uh, or let me just call this p z for all z in S of Q one. This shows that a is zero because this pairing is perfect. And because P, uh, uh, because uh, this form was assumed to be perfect, these matrices uh, span the space of symmetric n by n matrices. So this tells you that A is zero. Thank you. Uh, 
Okay, so this is an alternate way of thinking about uh, perfect, uh, perfect forms. Um, So, uh, uh, so this is the theorem of Voronoi. The only proof that I will be able to give you today is that extreme forms are perfect. It is not a difficult proof. So I'll just give the proof of that uh, that equivalence, that direction. So, proof that So suppose Q is extreme, but not perfect, then uh, there exists a, I mean essentially what we did here, non-zero symmetric matrix. No, I didn't uh, say anything about weakly eutectic. So uh, for, recall that a form is perfect if these span the space of symmetric n by n matrices. So uh, the trace pairing is zero on, which means that it is zero on all the. Yeah, you're right. I just used it perfect means weakly eutectic. Uh, there is a non-zero symmetric matrix S star such that uh, uh, Z transpose S star Z is zero for all Z in uh, S of Q. I'll just write this set as plus or minus Z one. Let, let Q lambda of X be uh, for uh, for lambda in R. Let Q lambda of X be uh, X transpose S plus lambda S star times X. So, I mean, th this is I think easy to check. Can check that. Uh, uh, there exists an alpha greater than zero such that for all lambda less than or equal to alpha, uh, Q lambda of X, Q lambda is positive definite and uh, M of Q lambda equals M of Q equals one. Okay, so uh, up to similarity with, uh, so you know, uh, you can find an orthogonal matrix for S and S prime such that uh, 
This is similar to a diagonal matrix, right? So I'll put this in diagonal form. So let, uh, uh, so let, uh, uh, I mean, I'll just let, uh, how do I write this? Uh, I just see. Let, uh, be the diagonal forms of uh, S and S star. Then, um, then the discriminant of Q lambda is uh, product I equals 1 to n SI plus lambda SI star. Right? And the function f of lambda, let and let, uh, I'll probably call it g of lambda, be uh, the log of the discriminant of q lambda. Then uh, a very simple uh, calculation will show that g is a strictly concave function of lambda. Easy. g is a strictly concave function of uh, lambda. So either for uh, either for lambda greater than 0 or for lambda less than 0, uh, the discriminant of Q lambda uh, is less than the discriminant of Q. Okay, so this will tell you that uh, f of q lambda is greater than f of q because m of q lambda and m of q are both 1. So this will tell you that f of q lambda is greater than f of q, but uh, q was extreme, so it was a local maximum. So that will contradict the fact that q is extreme. Will imply that uh, f of q lambda is greater than f of q. But uh, Q was a, a local maximum for F. So this proves the direction that uh, uh, extreme forms are perfect. So you find an orthogonal matrix and simultaneously, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, simultaneously. Sorry, yeah, that's true, yeah. You simultaneously diagonalize them. I should probably say that more precisely there, but. Uh, I guess, th I mean, it's always true for uh, real symmetric matrices, right? Sorry? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I need, to, yes, uh, sorry. Uh,
No, I'm not sure, Auntie. I'm yeah. Okay, there's some work there, sorry. Okay, that is uh, pretty much what I had to say, except uh, there's one more thing which I, uh, so there is an algorithm of Voronoi, which allows you to enumerate perfect form, which allows you to give a complete system of uh, perfect forms. Um, I, uh, I don't understand the details of this algorithm, so I'll, uh, so in the hunt for extreme forms, one first uh, tries to obtain a complete list of perfect forms. Um, So um, I, I'll just be uh, as loose as I can about it because that's all I know about it. So you start with a perfect form and uh, um, you look at what is called the Voronoi domain, I'll define that. And one can show that it is a polyhedral convex cone and attached to each facet of the cone, one constructs a new perfect form. Uh, this will be a finite set and these are called the forms that are uh, neighbors of this perfect form. And then you repeat that procedure for each of the forms that you obtain. The algorithm of uh, Voronoi basically say, says that this process terminates, thereby allowing you to obtain a complete list of perfect forms. But uh, so all I will do is just state what, uh, give you the definition of the, so start with the, a perfect form Q naught and uh, let VD be the set of all lambda x, xx transpose lambda x uh, or I hope this is correct, lambda x is greater than or equal to 0. This is called the Voronoi domain uh, where uh, uh, x, no I mean I am not, this is not what I meant to write. Uh, X is in S of Q. And uh, this is this is called the Voronoi domain attached to the lattice lambda. And uh, saying that a lattice is perfect um, amounts to saying that the interior of this domain is non-empty, right? Because these matrices uh, span the space of uh, symmetric matrices. So uh, uh, lambda is perfect is same as saying that uh, is uh, equivalent to saying that VD, the interior of VD is non-empty. And uh, saying that it is eutactic is the same as saying that A inverse belongs to the interior of I can't. In the space of all symmetric and bind matrices.
and uh, I guess as I said, one shows that this is a polyhedral convex cone and for each simplex in this uh, domain, one constructs a perfect form which is the part that I don't understand. But I'll give you a reference for this. This is theorem, this is covered in chapter uh, 7 of uh, Martinet's book on, book on uh, perfect lattices. In. Yeah, I guess that's all I have to say today. Let's stop here. Um, and you look at the set of minimal vectors of Q0 and form this Voronoi domain. One shows that this is a polyhedral convex cone and attached to each facet here, uh, one constructs a, a new perfect form. Uh, and uh, there are only finitely many of them that are inequivalent to the form that you started with. And uh, what more do I... Uh, yeah, and then you repeat this procedure for, e uh, those are called the neighbors of this form. You repeat this procedure for each of the new inequivalent perfect forms that you have obtained. And uh, the algorithm says that this process terminates. So one gets a, in, a sort of complete list. But the step, uh, I don't know if there is a simple way to explain how, how one constructs this perfect form attached to this facet. Uh, for me, it looked too, I mean, it was uh, fairly complicated for me to figure out in a, in the last uh, few. But I, I don't know how to, uh, I, I don't have an intuition for how that construction works, but to, to say anything about it. I mean, there are formulas that people have just written down. I can just write them down, but, you, uh, but I don't know if that would, uh, Mean in, I mean, it does. It didn't mean anything to me when I looked at it. So, sorry. Uh, This book by uh, Zong in chapter uh, two actually just gives these formulas for these new perfect forms that you construct. But uh, I, I, I didn't know what that meant or whether it would mean to write it down on the board, so I skipped it, yeah. But I guess that's, that's all I have to say. <laughs>